how our Lord was baptized in the Jordan by John. And we remember how St. John the Baptist, who lived his life in the desert, eating just locusts and wild honey, living a life of supreme prayer and fasting, of extreme abstinence and sacrifice. We hear how he was astonished by the depths of God's compassion and love. For he recognized, by virtue of his prayerfulness, in Jesus, that he, was the, he is the Messiah, the Son of the living God. And he was astonished because Christ came to him and asked to be baptized. And St. John says, Lord, rather it should be me who should ask of you baptism. But our Lord said, let it be done according to the truth for now. And St. John relented. St. John saw the light in Christ. He saw His holiness. <coughs> he saw before his eyes how the Lord's will and dispensation for mankind's salvation was unfolding. And he was partic participating in it. He saw how the world was about to change. He saw many things. And we also know from the Holy Scripture that when Christ arose from the water, St. John saw how a dove descended upon him, symbolizing the Holy Spirit. And how we heard from the heavens the voice of the Heavenly Father. Who said, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. St. John saw marvelous things, wonders, for he was the first to behold the Trinity manifested to the world. Abraham longed for it, Moses longed for it, all the prophets prophesying of the Messiah, longed for it. And St. John, the greatest of all the prophets, saw and beheld Christ, whom all the prophets before him foretold. A wondrous day, a wondrous event. For our Lord not only comes into this world, taking flesh, taking upon himself the sin of all mankind. But he also comes into this world to bless it and to sanctify it. For by virtue of him descending into the waters of Jordan, he did not need baptism, for he is sinless. He is perfect God and perfect man. But he comes and descends into the water to sanctify the waters, so that the waters may now be not something that brings death and destruction, but rather something that brings life and sanctification and holiness and God's blessings. For throughout the Old Testament, the water has served in many symbolic ways, most prominently served as a means of destruction, of destroying sin of destroying evil. We remember Noah, how he built the ark and the floods covered the earth and destroyed all that which, which was sinful. We remember Moses, how he led the people of Israel out of Egypt and crossed the Red Sea. And the sea parted for them to cross into the desert and enveloped all the Pharaoh's armies who were chasing them. In other words, enveloped death and destroyed sin. Today, our Lord descends into the water to sanctify them, for them now to bring life, for them now to bring holiness, 
for them now to sanctify us. For living in this world, brothers and sisters, we don't have to wait to depart this life in order to behold God, in order to partake of the promise of salvation, in order to commune with Him as Adam and Eve did. Because by virtue